Hello everyone and welcome back to the workshop. This is my Sherline lathe. It's been a project for me for a little bit. I had to rebuild all the CNC hardware to get it up and running, and now that I've done that, it works beautifully. Now ever since I moved into my new workshop, my goal was always to get a CNC lathe and mill to have a bit of a play around with. Now due to size limitations, a full size lathe and mill were always out of the question, leaving me with a few options. I could always get a mini mill. I actually owned an early example of the Chinese mini mills about five years ago, but the space that I'd like to put it is currently occupied by the big lathe. I could always squeeze in a small 30 by 20 mill, but these things are way underpowered and just not rigid enough to do any proper CNC work outside of cutting wood. And that's where I come back to the Sherline. If you think about it, the X and Z axis of a lathe look just like the X and Y axis you would see on a vertical mill. All we're missing is a spindle and a vertical axis and we would essentially have a mill. Now obviously I'm not the first person to notice this. Sherline even sell a vertical mill column for the lathe which would convert it into a mill. The way it would work being is to remove the motor, attach the column plus a motor and spindle and you would have a mill. But here I can see a few problems. First the work area is very limited, the X and Y travel is pretty small on the lathe and there just wouldn't be much travel before you'd reach the limits or the bed would hit the vertical mill column. Secondly, once you add up all the components plus shipping and import duty into Australian dollars, it's actually quite expensive for me to buy it from Sherline. And thirdly, to convert it from a lathe to a mill, you need to disassemble the lathe's motor, which would require a fair amount of time and effort. What I would really like is a lathe that can be really quickly converted into a mill. Now realistically, the biggest parts I'm going to cut on this lathe are probably at most 50 to 100 millimeters long, which means we have about 300 millimeters of unused space. All we need is to mount a spindle and vertical axis somewhere in the center and we would have a mill. So I went ahead on the internet and I bought a whole bunch of materials. Turns out the total cost for the material was around $500 or 350 US, which means I'm much better off doing this than buying even the cheapest Chinese mill. Now what I got was a 400 watt motor and spindle, 20 mm thick aluminium plate, 10 mm thick aluminium plate, linear rails, ball screws, a stepper motor and driver, and a lot of bolts. Now the way my design works is the whole Z axis, that's the mill Z axis, not the lathe Z axis, will bolt onto this 20 mm piece of aluminium plate. Now the proper way to do this would be to use precision ground plate, but that really wasn't an option during the lockdown and I don't require too much rigidity from it since I'm not cutting steel, so I think this piece of aluminium plate should suffice. Now for what I wanted, I chose the shortest linear rails, but if I ever want to upgrade it, that's a very easy thing to do. Now here's one thing that I messed up on. I ordered the linear rails and ball screws from overseas and I ordered them as a kit, but when they arrived, they weren't equal heights. From the photos online and the photos of other people's builds and the fact that they were sold as a kit, I assumed that they would be the same height, but no worries, I went ahead and made these brass standoffs to bring them up to the correct height. Thank you. 
Onto them we can bolt our 10mm piece of aluminium plate. Next we can go ahead and bolt the 400 watt motor and bracket to it. At the top end we need to attach the stepper motor bracket onto the aluminium. And you see that large hole to center the stepper motor? That was made using the four jaw chuck on the lathe and a boring bar. It just goes to show how multi-purpose lathes are. Okay, so the stepper motor then attaches onto the bracket and it fits into the plumb coupling. Okay, almost done. The second piece of aluminium plate then bolts into the base plate to form a 90 degree angle. And a 90 degree right angle bracket is then bolted on to add rigidity to it. The whole assembly is then bolted onto the workbench, something that I think I will need to stiffen in the future, but doing light cuts at the moment on plastic and aluminium, I'm perfectly happy with it. The spindle is then set up and a temporary milling plate is bolted to the lathe. This one was made up from a piece of scrap leftover aluminium, which I'm going to replace in the future. The stepper motor is then connected to the CNC board and the computer is booted up to set the stepper motor up in Mark III. The piece actually measures up to within the desired tolerances, which I'm very happy about. The next test piece was cut and I was also very happy with the results. Now here's the bit that I'm happy about. When the mill isn't required, the parallel port pins, which control the mill axis, are simply disabled and a new Mark III profile is loaded. 
This allows me to jump very quickly from using it as a mill to using it as a lathe. No disassembly required, it's all done in the software. All I have to do then is use a slightly different G-code and it works like a lathe. And with that, I hope you enjoyed this video. The mill still isn't perfect. There are a few accessories and upgrades that I'd like to do in the next few weeks. But apart from that, I am very, very happy. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. Thank you very much for watching.